I want to talk a little bit this morning about prayer. In fact, I want to be speaking on that this week and next. And I have, I need a few readers this morning. The first reading will be from 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. The second reading will be from Matthew 6, 9, 13. First reading, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Second reading, Matthew 6, 9, 13. I need a third reader, Matthew 5, 44. I need a fourth reader, Romans 12, 12. I need another reader. <laughs> Philippians 4, 6. You keep going, you're going to be out of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can start doubling. <laughs> <laughs> I can take the 1 Matthew Thessalonians 5, 17. Matthew 6, 9, 9, 13. Matthew 5, 44. Romans 12, 12. And Philippians 4, 6. We all need to develop a prayer life. God is calling all believers to pray. But we need to understand a little about prayer. It's important in our spiritual lives. We need to pray. We are called to pray. And in the times that we're living in, especially such a time as this, we need to be in communication with God to make our requests known. But that's not the only thing, to worship Him, <coughs> pray to Him, and let Him know how special he is to you, and to hear from him. So I want to talk a little bit about some basic things about prayer. God calls us to pray. God has commanded us to pray. If we are obedient to his will, then prayer must be a part of our lives. I just picked these few scriptures. There are many to help articulate that, where the Bible tells us to pray. First reader, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. What does it say? <clears throat> Who has it? I think Stephanie has it. 5, 17. Yeah. Never stop praying. Ah. <laughs> you needed more than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it say. Never stop praying. Matthew 6, 9. Matthew chapter 6, 9 to 13. That's for familiar prayer. Yes, Mary. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Now that's a serious prayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a serious prayer. It is. But we are admonished to pray like that. <clears throat> Romans 12.12, 12. who has it? Yes, Betty. Rejoice. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. Can you read that again? <clears throat> Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. Rejoice in our hope. Be patient in what? Trouble. In trouble and what? Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Philippians 4, 6. Who has it? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Yes. Matthew 5, 44. But I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Again, you need to read that one again, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, 
Love your enemies. Love your enemies. And pray for those who persecute you. And pray for those who persecute you. Now that's the word of God. You know that's probably the hardest passage in that. <laughs> that's a daily struggle. The struggle is real. Yes. It is. Yes. Real. Yes. It is and we are admonished to do that. Because it lines up with a lot of other scriptures that we're going to read. Because it is very... We just read one in Matthew 6, 9, 13. That says, forgive us as what? As we forgive. Hallelujah. You know, the forgiveness is a whole lot easier than the forget. It doesn't say you got to forget. But... The forgetting will get you every time, even after you're forgiven. Well, he knows. He knows. He doesn't mention forgetting. He mentions no, forgiving. Yeah. The thing is... It's the forgetting that keeps getting ah, in trouble, no. though. <laughs> the thing yeah. is, we speak that mm -hmm. on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because we actually say, forgive us as we forgive. So the way we forgive, as much as we struggle with that, we want him to forgive us with the same measure. And is that what you really want? <clears throat> it's something to think about. Mm -hmm. But like I say... We are all works in progress. Mm -hmm. We try to be better at all these things. We're dealing in a very sinful world with people with very different ideals and, 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 and they think differently and we have to give and take. Otherwise, we ain't gonna make it. Amen? But our God who is able is able to keep us and give us what we need to enjoy the times that we live in. And we mustn't forget that. There are many other places in the Bible that talks about and admonishes us to pray. Prayer is an act of obedience. God calls us to pray and we must respond. Prayer basically is how we communicate with God. It allows us to talk to God. Because we love God. We express our feelings to Him through prayer. We worship and we praise Him in prayer. It allows us to offer confessions of our sins, which leads to genuine repentance. Because we humble ourselves and recognize who it is that we are addressing. Amen? He's just not anybody. Moreover, prayer grants us the opportunity to present our requests to God. All of these aspects of prayer involve communication with our Creator. He is personal. He cares for us and wants to communicate with us through prayer. I need some readers. Very, very famous passages of scripture. Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Who knows that out of their head? Chronicles. Chronicles. Anybody got it? Second Chronicles, yes. Oh, second. oh I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's because I, it, it's such a familiar passage of scripture that I thought y'all would just no pick it up. Chapter 7, verse 14. Second. Yes, that's it. That's it. Who has it? Yes. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn... And the key part of this is turn from their wicked ways. Oh, then I will heal. Then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin and heal Amen. their land. Amen. Prayer is not just about asking God for blessings, though we welcome to do so, but it's about communication with the living God, doing what He asks us to do. We all know that without communication. Relationships fail. 
We know in our own human relationships, without communication, it suffers. So too does our relationship with Jesus suffer when we do not communicate with him. I have often said that we have an example, and our example is Jesus, because Jesus himself prayed. Here are a few examples. Rita, 612, Luke. Luke chapter 612. Somebody else, Luke chapter 5, 16. I need another reader, Matthew chapter 14, 23. And then Matthew chapter 26, 36. Luke 5, 16. Luke 6, 12. Matthew 14, 23. Matthew 26, 36. Who have Luke 5, 16? Anybody? I have Luke 6. Okay, read Luke. Okay, who has it? Luke 5, mm -hmm. 16. Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. Jesus often went into the wilderness for prayer. What does it say in 612? Luke. Now in those days, it occurred that he went up into a mountain to pray and spent the whole night in prayer to God. Jesus went up into the mountains and spent all night praying. Matthew 14, 23. Anybody? After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. He went up and prayed. These are examples of our example, Jesus, praying himself. Matthew 26, 36. What does it say? Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. This was just before they came and got him. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he went and he prayed. He is our example. Prayer also gives us power over evil. Mm -hmm. Can physical strength help us overcome obstacles and challenges in the spiritual realm? No. No. I need a reader. Ephesians 6 12. What does it say? We're talking about power in the spiritual realm. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, and we are not fighting against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Because we are not fighting against. Read it again. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, and the against. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. Yeah. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. We have to remember that. We are fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places. The enemy wants us to be fighting amongst ourselves and to get physical and nasty. <laughs> yeah. But in prayer, even the physically weak can become strong in the spiritual realm if they bring things under the word of God. When we pray, we can call upon God to grant us power over the evil one. Prayer also helps us to participate in what God is doing in the world. Don't get me wrong. God don't need our help. He is all powerful and in control of everything in this creation, in his creation. 
So why do we need prayer? Mm -hmm. Because prayer is the means God has ordained for some things to happen. He wants us to ask so he can grant it, so we can recognize and understand and see that he answers prayer. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because answered prayer is a witness that God hears and answers prayer. Prayer can also help to bring some people to the love of Jesus. Prayer can clear human obstacles out of the way so God can work. It is not that God can't work without our prayers, but he has established prayer as part of his plan for accomplishing his will on this earth. And when we pray, we participate in helping to build his kingdom here on this earth by praying for something to happen. And then he answers our requests. Amen? Amen. Prayer is something that we all can do. Prayer is available to all of us. And nothing can keep us from approaching God in prayer. There's a scripture in Romans that says nothing can separate us from the love of God. In fact, let's read that. Somebody find Romans chapter 8. And I want you to read verses 38 and 39. Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Yes. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation, will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. We need to let that sink in. Because a lot of times things start happening and then you start freaking out and getting stressed out and you forget this can't take you away from God. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me, family? And the fact that you know that should bring you a sense of peace and cause you to rest in that knowledge. <clears throat> With our physical eyes, we see a lot of things. And then in our minds, we start figuring out how this is going to happen, how that is going to happen. How, and with God, that doesn't necessarily have to be true. And that is the hope that we hold on to. We just read the scripture. Hold on to your hope and never stop praying. Because you don't understand everything. You can't work everything out in your humanness. But as a child of God, never forget that your life is in his hands. It always has been, and it always will be. Amen. Are you hearing me, family? Death, nor life, and all them things we just read about cannot separate you from his love. Hold on to that. Know who you are in Christ. Too many times we allow people to affect us to such a point that all they got to do is say A and be ready to freak out. And God then tell you you're B. Amen? Hold on to that. Fight for that. Anybody want to fight, fight, fight? That's what you fight for. 
Remember who you are. Identity. It's important. Prayer can succeed where other means fail. When all your options have been exhausted, prayer can succeed. That is why prayer should not be our last resort, but our first response. Prayer needs to be sincere. Because sometimes a sincere prayer offered can accomplish great things. I need to read a James chapter 5 verse 16. Anybody know it out their head? I have to feel it, but I don't know. <laughs> James chapter 5 verse 16. <clears throat> Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Read that last portion again. The what? Some Bibles say sincere, but that Bible says earnest. The earnest, earnest prayer, what? Of a righteous person. From a righteous person, go ahead. Has great power. And has great power. Hallelujah. And what? Produces wonderful results. And produces wonderful results. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Prayer also gives us an opportunity to experience God. Through prayer, we can experience God on a level that helps to increase our faith. Because answered prayer is a witness. If our prayer is answered, it can become a potential witness mm -hmm. for those who doubt, even for us. So we pray to receive from God things like healing, financial, favor, forgiveness, protection, provisions, and wisdom. We pray for these things. And when God answers, it becomes a witness. And we know that he hears and answers our prayers. Prayer can also strengthen relationships between believers. It not only strengthens our relationship with God, but when we pray with each other, prayer also strengthens our bond. But the enemy don't want us to pray together. That is why one of the weakest ministries of the church is the prayer meeting. People don't want to come together and pray. It strengthens us. It brings us together in the spirit of unity. There is unity about praying together. Great things happen when we come together in prayer. When everybody is on one accord, mm -hmm. the Spirit of God moves. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Prayer also keeps us humble before God. Humility is a virtue God desires in all of us. I need some readers. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2. Second reader, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. Third reader, James chapter 4, verse 10. James chapter 4, verse 10. Proverbs 11, 2. Yes, Ken. When pride comes... Then comes disgrace, or then comes the fall. But wisdom is with the humble. Oh, it's terrible, man. That's it. I was, I was thinking, but that's it. But wisdom is with the humble. So read it again. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. You're saying when pride comes, mm -hmm. it brings what? It brings 
Disgrace and the fall. And fall. But wisdom is the is the humble. <coughs> wisdom is with the humble. Ephesians 4, 2. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Oh, you gotta read that one again. <laughs> Be completely humble. Now, what version that is? NIV. NIV. The NIV says completely. I like that. Be completely what? Humble Ooh. and gentle. And what else? Gentle. Mm. And be patient. Bearing with one another in love. All the things we need right now. Read that one again. Completely <laughs> humble and gentle. gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Bearing with one another in what? Love. Ooh. <coughs> That's a positive verse. That's a hard verse. <laughs> you see why prayer keeps us humble before God. We, and I've said this on many occasions, it doesn't matter what we go through in life, whatever situations or circumstances that we may find ourselves in, we cannot afford to take God out of the equation. Yes. And you'll hear me say that many times? You can't. Because the second we take him out, we in trouble. Because this flesh will take over and somebody going to get hurt. Yeah. That's what happened when they took Bible reading and prayer out of school. Took our nation down. Somebody is going to get hurt. We have to remember what he says. And he says, be humble. We just read another voice that says, pride comes before a fall. Mm -hmm. He ain't looking for the pride. He's looking for humility. Humble. And then be patient and be gentle. Don't hate the messenger. <laughs> Your problem ain't with me. It's with the word God. Amen? That's who's saying this. Mm, mm, mm. James chapter 4 verse 10. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Ooh. There you go. Humble yourself before who? The Lord. Before who? The Lord. the Lord. And who will lift you up? Lord. You see where we get that wrong? Too many people will humble themselves before a man, so man can exalt them. Huh? But the Bible says, humble yourself before God. And he will lift you up. Prayer reminds us that we are not in control. But God is. We need God, family. We pray to acknowledge our dependence on him. We recognize that it's not all about us. Pride. I can, I can, I can, I can. We must understand that without God, we are nothing. Even though we may think we are. <laughs> That's the deception. And how we have allowed the enemy to blind you. Because some things may be going right in your life. People may be stroking you in such a way that it feels good. You walk through the door and they roll out the red carpet. They may want to come and lift you up on their shoulders and say you're this and you're that and you're the next thing. But God is in control. Because my Bible tells me, what does it profit a man? If what? To gain the world. What? Come on, you know what it says. To gain the world, but lose your soul. If you gain all them things, mm -hmm. all them things that you want, 
being stroked the right way and money here and respect and you get all of that. But then you lose what? You lose your soul. We have to understand and come to a place in our lives that without God, we are nothing. This revelation keeps our pride in check. We need God through prayer. We are made to function best emotionally when we have a powerful relationship with God. All the married people know and understand that if there is a breakdown in communication, the marriage suffers. There must be communication. So it is with God. We must talk to Him and then listen to Him. Amen? Amen. Now this is what prayer is not. It is not magic. And prayer does not make Demands like, God, go kill her because I don't like her. Go kill him because I don't like him. You don't just demand God to do these types of things because you think you could talk to him through prayer. Prayer is for our benefit, not God's. And prayer is not a guarantee against suffering. Prayer is not an opportunity to show off. There is a prerequisite, a thing that is required as a prior condition for something to happen with your prayers. My favorite <coughs> verse, verse in the Bible, one of them, is Hebrews 11 and 6, which says, but without faith. Yeah. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. I, re I want a reader to read Mark chapter 11, verses 22 to 25. Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 11. We must, when we pray, have faith that God is who he says he is, and that he will do what he says he will do. What's the sense of praying to someone and you know you're going in knowing you, you don't believe that they can do what you say anyhow? Amen? How many verses? Mark chapter 11, verses 22 to 25. You have it? Yeah. Okay. It says, have faith in God. Jesus answered, truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain... Go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Amen. <laughs> and that comes with faith. Uh, One of the problems <coughs> that a lot of believers have is a lack of faith. You see, it don't make sense praying because someone tells you that if you speak to God, he hears you, and he will do what you ask him to do. And you do it as a ritual. But in your own heart, deep down inside, you're not really believing that what you say will happen. There's something else going on there. And God knows your heart. He knows if you're coming to him real or if this is just something that you're doing just because somebody else say you must do it. You need to have faith and you need to believe. 
You need to believe in Jesus. You need to believe that he will hear you. You need to believe that he has your best interest at heart. You need to believe that he will answer you according to his will mm -hmm. for your life. Yes. Amen? Because, you know, sometimes we want a lot of things, and that's not God's will. That's why you hear many people pray, God, I want this. This is, this is my heart's desire. But... <laughs> Your will be done. Amen? Amen? Your will be done. We must have faith. And then be in the right attitude when we come before God to pray. Not holding anything against anybody else. And that's what the word say. Because when we pray, we are to pray for others, especially our enemies and those that have wronged us. If you have something against somebody, then you can't pray for them. Not a good <coughs> prayer. <laughs> Amen? And you can't pray and act like God is your bouncer. <laughs> he is not your personal bodyguard and bouncer to do your will. Especially when it comes to hurting people. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. That's why we need to love one another. Have compassion mm -hmm. for one another. Yeah. Give each other the benefit of the doubt. Because we don't always do the right thing. We don't always say the right thing. And when we mess up and, and, and trip up, we want someone to give us grace and mercy. And that is what we need to extend to others. I try to treat people the way I want to be treated. I don't want to come down with a hammer on somebody just because I find them in the fault. Because when I trip up, I can look up and say, forgive me. Please. Amen? That is what we need to do. We must forgive. This is a good store towards obtaining pardon. For our sins. Like I said before, the Bible says, forgive that we may be forgiven. So when we forgive, that qualifies us to, for to receive forgiveness. Jesus insists that we love one another. And that is what we need to fix before we go before him. In prayer. Amen? Amen? I just wanted to set that foundation this week because I want to go into in depth next week a little bit more about prayer. Mm -hmm. Because before you pray, you got to make sure your mind is right. Mm -hmm. All those things, that bitterness, and we got to get rid of all of that. And we have to understand, everybody ain't alike. It's not going to happen. Everybody ain't alike. And we have to find ourselves in a place where we can pray for everybody. Amen? This coming week, we're heading towards Tuesday, which is the election day. And we need to pray for this nation. Pray for the election. Pray for our communities. Pray for people everywhere. All leaders. From the home, to the community, schools, churches, government, you name it. Everybody needs prayer. Everybody needs to be seeking God's face for themselves. In this church, I have always tried to direct you, to encourage you to read God's yes. word. That is the only way you will find out what God requires of you. Otherwise, you're going to go on your own Understanding. And what does Proverbs tell us? Rely not. 
Huh? Somebody read it. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. What does it say? Lean not on your own understanding. He will direct your paths and make them straight. Trust in him. Trust in the Lord. With all your heart and all your mind and all. And lean not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes, yes. Who will acknowledge? God, God. Jesus. And you got to do that by seeking the word of God, reading the word yeah. of God. And then he will what? He will direct direct your path. Give you the direction you need. See, that's where we get it from. This world got plenty of directions. <laughs> and if you take God out of the equation and start listening to all these people, you can get mixed right up. And the thing about it is, some of the things that they say sound so good. Amen? I was watching a program on television. Like I get up really early in the morning, <coughs> and it was like 3.30. And they have this program about how addictive this TikTok, yeah. this TikTok thing is. There are people who are now living their lives according to TikTok. This is where they get all their information <laughs> From. That explains a lot. Huh? That's that explains a lot. It's, it's the truth. Down the Anything they want to find out, apparently you could program it into, it's like Googling something. <laughs> you go on TikTok and you will find someone who can direct you and give you some information about whatever it is that you're seeking. That is not where we as believers are to get our source. Mm -hmm of information from us. Amen? Amen? And I am here to warn you, be careful mm -hmm. listening to other people and not God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. I will continue to encourage you and tell you, seek first mm -hmm. the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Read the word of God. Let the spirit of the living God guide your life give you wisdom. The beginning of wisdom is knowing God. So I pray that this week you are led by the Spirit of God and pray for this nation. Amen? I want to say a word of prayer right now. So I'd like for you to bow your heads as we pray together. Heavenly Father, as the election approaches, we seek to better understand the issues and concerns that confront our city, state, and country, and how the gospel of Jesus Christ compels us to respond as faithful citizens, not only to our communities, but to the kingdom of God. Lord, I ask right now for eyes that are free from blindness, so we may see each other as brothers and sisters. I pray for all victims and victimizations. Victims of abuse, mm. violence, deceit, poverty, oppression in any form and by any means. Mm. We pray for discernment right now for your people mm -hmm. as they choose who they want to lead in this next election. Lord, we really need leaders who will hear from you. We don't always get them, but we pray for them. We thank you for the privilege of being able to organize ourselves 
politically. But also knowing that political loyalty does not have to mean being disloyal to you. Lord, we rejoice today that we are citizens of your kingdom. And may that make us all the more committed to being faithful citizens of this world. O oh God of mercy, this nation is in a serious time of great transition. May your people hear from you as they seek your guidance moving forward. So many people right now are feeling anxious, worried, and stressed. I pray right now in the name of Jesus for peace. Help us to remember that no matter who becomes president, you are still on the throne and fully in control. I pray honesty, fairness, and truth prevail. Grant us your wisdom and fill us with your love that we may overcome all that divides us. Father, we humble ourselves before you <coughs> as we pray. Heal this land and shed your grace and your mercy once again. We ask these things in no other name but the mighty name of Jesus, our soon coming King. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Before we go, I would like for us to take the Lord's Supper. Can somebody assist me with that, please? The Bible tells us, as often as we can, let us remember the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. As believers, we need to be intentional. Thank you. Thank you. We need to be intentional about doing everything that we possibly can to remember Jesus. Amen? everything that we possibly can because every day it is so easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day activities the do's and the don'ts all the things that you have to do and if we don't be intentional about taking a little time to remember him we won't he will not even be on our minds amen yes. we need to family keep him there to counter all these other things. This is something that we do to remember what Jesus did for us. <coughs> the sacrifice he made for us on the cross. We're going to take it together this morning. Just give a minute to wait for Pastor Dave and Tim to come. So that Collectively, we can take the Lord's Supper. This cracker mm -hmm. <laughs> represents the body of Christ that was nailed to the cross. It's a symbol that we remember and recognize what he did for us. A sacrifice needed, was needed, because the wages of sin was death, but he paid that death so that we wouldn't have to pay it.
we remember that this represents his body that was nailed to that cross for us. And as we take it, we want to say, thank you, Jesus, for sacrificing your body for us. Let's take it together. Jesus, we thank you. And God, we say thank you for sending your son to be that sacrifice that was needed. His cup represents the blood of Jesus that he shared. His blood covers a multitude of sins. And it was his blood that cleansed us. The Bible says, and made us white as snow. So as we take this cup, this juice, we remember the blood <coughs> that was shed. Because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood. Let's take the cup together. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for salvation. Thank you that we didn't have to stay in that fallen place. Thank you, God, for making a way out through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for your obedience in coming and being that sacrificial lamb. We remember that, and we say thank you. Cover us as we leave this place, but not your presence. And we pray that everything go in decency and in order in the coming days as a new government is chosen over this nation. Thank you because we know that you heard our prayers. With all the millions and millions of people that are praying today, we know that you hear us, and we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope that something that was said, that you could take it and ponder it. And remember, we need to be in communication with God. Amen? It is vital to our relationship with him. I hope you all have a blessed day and a great week as you go and be guided by the Spirit this week. Amen? Amen. You are dismissed.